what I know about Officer Tommy Norman is uh, is rather uh, obscure. Uh, I've seen videos of him interacting with people who uh, appear to be in the inner city. He's been called the social media cop by Carrie Sanders. And um, a lot of his videos have him doing hands-on work with people in, uh, in the inner city, in the community of Little Rock, Arkansas. And, and I don't see anything wrong with this at all. As a matter of fact, if you check out another YouTuber by the name of Painless Risen, he talks about community policing, and he talks about the issue of community policing in, in the black American so-called community. Tommy Norman has done extensive work in being able to be on the ground with citizens and gaining the trust of citizens, particularly African-American citizens in Little Rock, Arkansas. And for that, I commend him. I also see that he has a daughter that appears to be, I think there's a picture of him and his wife or his girlfriend or whoever it is on Wikipedia, but his daughter appears to be mixed race. Well, of course, right, because he's classify as white in America and and you see him in the thumbnail that I have uh, putting a crown on her as if she was a princess or a queen now here's why that is harmful the princess and the queen thinking is what got the communities in the inner city in the inner city where they are today simply put because the inner cities are highly matriarchal Uh, without a father in the home. And in the parlance of O'Shea Duke Jackson, Tommy Norman can be considered a white zaddy. Now, the question here is, in everybody's mind, or in a lot of people's mind, or a lot of rational minds, would be, if Officer Tommy Norman was black, do you think he would be received the same? Do you think he would have the same cooperation in the communities? And here's another question that comes to mind. How does Tommy Norman... How does Tommy Norman arrest anybody? Like, I've never seen or heard of Tommy Norman arresting anyone. And I know he's making headways into the community and doing good things for the community. But... Let that man arrest. I want that. I wanted to hear about him making an arrest because it's one thing to be a patrolman and 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 bring goodwill to the community. But the question is, if you catch something going on that sh- that's against the law in the community, are you, Officer Norman, going to make an arrest? And if so, are you going to do it on your own? Are you going to have a like I, I've seen you riding with, I've seen Officer Tommy Norman riding with um, what appears to be a, a, a African American woman. Uh, um, some have identified her as a captain, uh, but I wonder if if he just patrols and he is the public relations branch of his police department, and then when it comes time to have to arrest someone, uh, do they send in someone else to do the arresting? See, the interesting thing is Officer Norman has and and a lot of black American YouTubers have spoke about this about the the types of messages that are in the the music in the culture that promote uh, promote violence uh, promote anti-police And the also appearingly conflicting views of African Americans when it comes to uh, when it comes to race, no 
single logical stance is taken on a particular matter regarding that and regarding, uh, for example, it's high. One thing that a lot of people know, but that are afraid to say, is that they know that a lot of times African American women, particularly, are because they're doing a lot better on the stats as far as graduating from college, uh, co- degrees, and careers, uh, and in number uh, than uh, Black American men. A lot of times black american men to them are looked at as subpar so that's where that's where the term white zaddy now the 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 broader term for black americans when dealing with issues uh well when dealing with the concept of 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 white people or the white um the white governance is being more efficient than black people's uh, is a term called, and I, I want to. I, I just use governance as a, as an example, but anything white people do that black, anything black people do that white people do better or more efficiently, and there's and the and the phrase is, the white man's ice is colder, and a lot of black YouTubers use this term, and and this carries over into Officer Tommy Norman. If Officer Tommy Norman was black, would he be as respected? Would he be, you know, would he be as he would he be the the social media cop that he is? Now I've seen one Black American cop who um, I forget his I think he's in Oklahoma or Florida I don't remember the state but he knows how to box and he was getting in there sparring with um, sparring with some of the um, the local youngins but you know and that's a risky that's risky that's very risky to. Um, to take off your badge or gun or whatever and spar with, you know, it might seem on some levels like the the black cop that was doing that was, you know, you know, because he was doing with a young black youth and, you know, it, he could appear as a father figure of sorts in a sense, but it's very risky because if that cop was to get knocked out or hurt in that sparring match, it wouldn't have been a good look for him. So. On one hand, it can be seen as he may have, he may have was patrolling and saw a kid that looked like he thought he was boxing and he couldn't box. And since the cop has experience in boxing, he went and did that. But if there was a young man in the neighborhood who who was good at boxing and came out and said, yo, let's box. And he knocked that cop down on his ass. That would not have been a good look for the police department. So it was a risk, and he took a risk. And you know what? Risk taking is healthy on a certain level. But when you're in a position of authority and you want to maintain that authority, you got to really weigh in the the cost versus benefit. Now, in Tommy Norman's case, all the videos you see of him are simply him riding around, talking to people in the neighborhood and stuff like that, which is a very, which is very hands off. I mean, it's very, it's, it's hands off in the sense of, it's hands on in the sense of, let me correct myself. He's hands on in the sense of socially getting involved with people. But I am curious because I didn't do the research on the statistics of Little Rock's crime. I remember the last time I really heard about Little Rock was in the 90s and it was talking about the gangs of Little Rock, Arkansas. I don't know if, if Norman was on the police force then and if he was. If anybody has any data, or maybe if I'm interested to go back later and check, maybe I'll, I'll look at his police, at his uh, at his record as far as being an officer of the law, and what the crime stats were when he was on patrol, if he was in the, if he was serving in Little Rock at the time, when the gangs were really booming in Little Rock, Arkansas. Now I think the Little Rock, Arkansas gang surge that came in the '90s was reminiscent of. Uh, a lot of the West Coast culture being exported out of the West Coast in the 90s due to not only movies and media, but the but the race wars that were happening, the so-called race wars that were happening that was driving a lot of these gang members, black and Mexican, uh, black and Hispanic, excuse me, out of Los Angeles and into other states where 
you know, this happened a lot in the D.C. area where you would have someone who was either African-American or Hispanic, Latino and they would be from Los Angeles and their family would get them out of Los Angeles because they were in some type of trouble. And what they would do is they would bring them to the East Coast to start a new life. And then this kid, particularly the Latino, would start a gang in the East Coast and brag about that he comes from the West Coast. But none of the, in while, it, while it's true he came from the West Coast, none of the kids ask him, why is he here? Why is he here on the East Coast? Why aren't you th- back there popping off like you were? And that's because in he is a he was a big fish in a small pond because that gang culture was new to the East Coast. And I would say Officer Tommy Norman, in a way, is a big fish in a small pond. He's he's got the white zaddy. Uh, he's got the you know, you know, he's got the the look, you know, when he cuts his hair bald. You know, you don't know the texture of his hair. And I mean, I, I've seen this and I, I'm sure other black YouTubers have seen this. Like, for example, if if there's a quote unquote white woman who wants to assimilate into what we consider black culture, she'll usually get a hairstyle that a lot of black women get. And it won't exaggerate. And usually this hairstyle is short or it will be with extensions. But it won't exaggerate the fact that her hair is naturally long and wavy. So in reverse, I've, I've seen this happen with uh, mixed folks. But white folks that hang with black people is they'll, they'll cut their hair super short or shave it off. Because that way you can't tell that, they're, that their hair grows wavy and they can further assimilate into quote unquote looking black but that's a story for another time but I would say that Officer Tommy Norman would be the swirler's dream Uh, you know there's a there's a there is a a growing community of uh, interracially dating black women who consider themselves to be quote unquote swirling and their mentality is that they are um divesting right i mean first of all in order to divest you first have to be invested um while black women's salaries have been higher their levels of assets and holdings are pretty low on average their net asset value is pretty low on average even though their their earnings are high because of debts um and 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 the, the you know the college debts and the things like that for all the degrees um, are are racking up. Now, this is not to um, this is not to say that um, that they're bad people because of this. This is just to talk on a financial basis. Um, when you talk about investing in a community, um, we're talking about like putting money into into you know like building like you know a lot of the NBA players have done uh, put money into the community to build like a community center or to build some some kind of school or to do something. To get a program going for for the inner city youth. Um, now, while there may have been while there may have been people who have done this who have been women, I don't hear a lot about it. I don't hear a lot about. It. I mean, you hear about Oprah doing things in Africa, but you don't really hear a lot about Black American women building schools in Black American communities. Um, or I haven't heard of it. But if I have, if there is, correct me. But I hear mostly of these NBA or NFL players doing it. So there's that divestment, but in order to divest, you'd have first have to invest it. And I haven't seen a substantial investment with them, except for, you know, be, except for creating more babies for the uh, for the community. Um, and 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 on the men's side, to boot, uh, the men have the the women call themselves divesting. I don't know if having more babies for the community is investing, but um, men don't usually say that they've divested. They say that um, at the ex- most extreme, they say, save yourself, black man. But they don't really say they've divested of the black community. Or And um, so this is an interesting thing. But these, are, these women uh, tend to refer to themselves as swirlers. Like I said, there's a psychological component 
to their interracial dating, which makes it such that such that they, they, they're creating it as a movement. Like there's an exodus out. And listen, I can definitely understand that in the 90s, it appeared as if the black female was faithful to the idea of the black male. I don't have a dog in this fight, but I will say black male masculinity was also higher in the 90s too. And the, and the, and the, um, and the mothers and fathers of, of said black men and women uh, may have come from the age, the more industrial age where, you know, black men were still working for like General Motors or different, um, different companies that were um, producing, uh, that were manufacturing in the U.S. And so at that point they were breadwinners. So it's, it's highly possible that that is the reason. But anyways, I would say that Officer Tommy Norman is the sword or stream. A guy who can get down in the black community, gets respect from black people, and because he's a police officer, he has clout. And I feel like a lot of Officer Tommy Norman's, uh, a lot of things he does, uh, is clout chasing because he's posting himself on Instagram and going around with videos, and he's getting hearts and likes. And there's nothing wrong with being a human being, but I mean, in in the course of police work, you've got to be really careful. You got to be really careful because one slip up and your ass is on display for the world to see. So that's just my take. Low out.